people always ask me, yo, 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 blood, what is the best start every season? And I always tell them, just play whatever you want, you know, whatever's cool, maybe your least played class and all that. But in this video, we're going to cover what's the best start. We're also going to talk about solo pushing, maybe some group play. I'll touch upon spinning your blood shards early, uh, your hope of cane upgrade, and basically how you would take advantage of the cube or even build. So I'm going to kind of go through each and every class. And at the end of the video, I'll give all the conclusion and all the awards and everything like that. These videos do take a long time to produce, so a like on the video would be much appreciated. There's also going to be timestamps in the description, uh, so you can zoom up to your class. And in the timeline itself, there's like a chapter menu. And a lot of it we're going to talk about is the Challenge Rift Cache. If you don't know what that is, let me explain. You go to Game Settings, and the third tab down is Challenge Rifts, right? So this week it's a wizard, and you get this Challenge Rift Cache. The Challenge Rift contains 35 dbs, gold, blood shards, so we can do level one blood shard spending and get a multiplier right away or when we're leveling. We also have the gold to unlock our blacksmith to max level and do a weapon upgrade. So you can actually craft a level 70 weapon at level one if you save this bag. Now this bag resets pretty much every Monday and the week of the season, we don't know when that day is. Just save your challenge rift bag till after the season starts, do your challenge rift and then go back on your level one fresh season 22 character and spend away, man. You get to cube stuff. You don't even have to do bounties on launch night if you don't want to because you get this right here. For Crusader, we're getting the AOV set or the Aegis of Valor. This set focuses on Fist of Heavens and Heaven's Fury. It's incredibly powerful. It's currently like S tier in season 21 and nothing looks like it's gonna change in season 22. Although the hype is mostly around a con bomb, this might change during the PTR. So keep an eye out on my website, it's bloodshed.com. You just hover over the D3 content, pick the class you want, and then I have an ongoing tier list here. So right now, Con Thorns and Heaven's Fury is both in the S tier. Things can change, like I said, during the PTR, so just go back, check here often, or before the season, after the season starts, and you can be up to date on the latest and greatest. So yeah, Crusader has two builds in the S tier, which is great if you've been wanting to play Crusader. The AOV is the group RGK. Lawn Bomb is great for pugs. It's it's currently the strongest build we've had in the game right now. So we'll see if it goes live. Hopefully they don't nerf it to the ground. It'll be fun to watch this video in the future. With the Akon set, you're going to, with the fourth slot in the cube, if you go Akon Bomb, you're probably going to go COE. Um, I love to run two defensive rings just like this guy here. Two defensive rings and you need Ring of World Grandeur to tie all the sets together. And the fourth slot, I would definitely put uh, COE, so that's great. For AOV Heaven's Fury, I probably would run with the Ivory Tower in the cube. But I'm going to do more testing as we get the fourth slot and keep it up to date for you guys. Remember, if you save your Challenge of Cash, you get Blood Shards. Sorry. So for level one, for Blood Shards, you're going to roll Shields at Kadala. You can get Crusader Shield or you can get just a regular Shield. The good news is both of them have multipliers on them, Denial and Garda Johanna. If you get the Guard of Johanna, you're going to focus around hammers until you get your two-piece AOV set from Hadrig. If you get the Den Denial Shield, you're going to focus on Sweep Attack um, until the same time also. And again, if you get any better legendary multipliers along the way, feel free to swap them in or add to these two. For your level 70 two-hand upgrade, uh, this time around, I recommend going for a two-handed flail. They did buff um, the Mortal Drama, so now Bombardment has a 500% multiplier on it. So it definitely goes with the Akon set, the Golden Flints, uh, goes with Sweep Attack if you get the Shield. The Flail Charge is going to be great for speeds. For AOV, it's actually used in AOV and Akon. So the top two S tier builds would typically use this for speeds, which is great. Early game, your build's going to look like this. You're basically going to use Block to get resource back, use Shield Glare to get resource back, use Fires of Heaven to do the damage, right? If you don't know about the AOV set, uh, attacking with Fist of Heavens powers up Heaven's Fury up to 300%, and that's going to easily crush even the GR20 clear, you know, to get your two and four piece from Kadala. Once you get your four piece, you get uh, resource back when you cast Fist of Heavens, so then you don't need to carry a generator anymore. You basically have infinite resource the rest of the season, as long as you're using AOV. It's great, right? So. This is the best set for like overall progression where the two, four, and six piece give you um, everything that you need, whether it's resource, you know, damage reduction, damage on the two piece, damage on the six piece. AOV is a great start overall, just solid. For demon hunters, you get the god set, the Gears of the Dreadlands. 
Uh, the God, the Gears of the Dread lens is basically God tier, S tier, amazing build in season 21. Nothing's going to change in season 22. With the four slot, you might be using Bariza. If you want more tanky setup, you can use Elusive Ring. Um, we're going to kick around a lot of ideas and again, keep the site updated. It's amazing for speeds, bounties, group play, pretty much every aspect of the game, the God DH crushes. I'm going to tell you what I would do and then I'll go back and tell you guys the safe play so you can make that decision for yourself. What I would do is at level 34, I would roll quivers and I would swing for the fences. Since in my opinion, the God DH is good on its own, um, it doesn't really need any help, right? So I'd go for quivers at level 34. You can get uh, the ninth satchel, which buffs Hungering Arrow. You can get um, the duffel that buffs bolas. You can get Holy Point Shot. Um, what you really want are generators, because if you don't know the God set, the two piece buffs your generators, right? 10% per momentum stack. So it's really good to focus on that. It actually buffs all your generators, even if you get like depth diggers or anything that is generator-ish. And for your weapon upgrade, your level 70, I would make a bow. Yes, a bow. And I would go for Yang's recurve. I would pray for the Yang's recurve bow. Yes, Yang's recurve. Why would you use a multi-shot bow on the God set? Because it naturally rolls with 50% reduced resource cost and it makes the build just beautiful. I mean, you could just spin to win forever and not have to even ever worry about resource. And let's say you get Yang's Recurve, you can even use multi-shot to level and multi-shot's great, you know, to get you into your God set from there. You can also get uh, newly buffed items that they did last patch, I believe, like the Odyssey's End where you get Entangling Shot. It's a generator that buffs the set. Um, there's a Bola Bow you can get to increase your damage with Bolas which is pretty much what I'm going to be building at early game. I have fire bolas, in my opinion, is the best for early game DH. But late game, obviously, Hungering Arrow is king. Now the safe play. Let's rewind for Blood Shards. The safest play you could do is going to be Pants for Pox Faults. It's a 500% multiplier. As a strafe build, you're going to be right in the thick of it with mobs anyway. It's great for Massacre bonuses while leveling. It's great for early game as you're doing your Hadrig and all your bounties and all that stuff. Pox Faults is the safe play. And for weapon upgrades, the safe play is daggers, right? I won't fault you if you roll for daggers. Greenstone is a huge, insanely big multiplier and you have a 50% chance to get it. You'd be one-shotting elites your whole season journey. And Carlisle's point is still great. Um, a 375% multiplier is nothing to scoff at. And if you get the holy point quiver, this might be really good as well. This is a safer route. You have 100% chance to get a multiplier with daggers. And if you go for Pox Faults, you have 100% chance to get the multiplier if you get the legendary for Pox Faults. But like I said, this is just a safer play. Also, like I was saying, I would definitely uh, build around the two and four piece strafe set once you get it. And I would use Fire Bolas. It's really, really good. And the dot is noticeable. Just like Fire Exploding Palm Monk, the dot is noticeable. Fire Sweep Seder is noticeable early on. It just really chunks um, enemies when they have lower HP, like T1 through 6 or so. For monks, they're getting the Patterns of Justice Monk. Now this build is one of the, my most favorite uh, builds in the game. And when new players ask me, yo blood, yo yo blood, what's fun to play in Diablo 3? I always will direct them toward Whirlwind Barb or Patterns of Justice Monk since you get lots of wave clear, it's fast, fun, and you can't really mess it up too bad. And this season along with the fourth cube slot, you can use Slender Little Rogue for like a tankier option. So it's stronger than season 21, tankier. And you can also go with Shenlong instead of Slender Little Rogue and get some insane power. It'll definitely be S tier. So it brings it up a whole new tier. Um, Shenlong's getting buffed. And even if it wasn't getting buffed, it would definitely bump it up a tier. It's really, really good with the set. But a lot more finicky and annoying to play with the Shenlong version. I'll probably have uh, two options on my website for sure. Just like the God set and the AOV set, it's great at bounties, great for speeds. Uh, Blizzard with the new sets kind of gave it a theme where pretty much most of them are great for speeds, bounties, rifts, griffs, casual groups, a lot of things like that. Another thing you could do with Paj is a hybrid support build where you can kill elites but still offer enough shields for your barbs or your demon hunters to survive using Squirt's Necklace. It's a, it's a nice play style and I recommend it if you're playing with your friends or like I was saying, like casual pugs. Uh, for Blood Shards for Monk, we got something new, technically, new-ish. We got Bracers. They buffed Gundo Gear. Um, currently, it could be buffed further by the time you see this, but 
uh, Gundo Gear is has a hundred percent multiplier on them, and we did a level test with it, and it feels amazing, right? You just EP your target, and then punch them to death, and then you get all these exploding palm bleed dots everywhere. It's great. I'd recommend the Fire Rune or the Cold Rune, um, as they're both really good. You can also get Pinto's Pride, which buffs Wave of Light, or Caesar's Memento. So they get uh, this is the this is the real meal ticket because this is synergizes with your set at seventy. Uh, enemies take six to eight hundred percent increased damage from your Tempest Rush after you hit them with a blind freeze or stun. Monks are always blind freezing or stunning constantly. There's a lot of easy ways to do it. Like with the two piece Podge set, you get sweeping winds, all the runes, and there's a freeze rune. There's also blinding flash that blinds them, so you'd be good to go. It also procs your relentless assault, which is great. This is like something you'd probably build into with your two piece. Attacking the four piece, attacking with Tempest Rush reduces your damage taken and gives you spirit region. So once you uh, get your four piece, you're probably going to focus on the flurry rune with Tempest Rush. You basically hold it down and you can see this counter going all the way up and it goes up to 100 and you would blinding flash and then let go and then it does a big AoE damage to the mobs for sure. If you can't get it to 100, for whatever reason, it's fine to use it earlier and just kind of gauge the damage of how much you have. This pairs great with Caesar's Memento. If you don't have Caesar's Memento, then you probably want to build around any legendary that you get. So just use the two-piece and like LTK boots or whatever legendary you get along the way. For the weapon upgrade, you can do a Diabo at level 70 or you can do Fist Weapons. They're both good options. They're both around the same percentage to get something good it's really up to you i'll leave rng in your hands if it was me i would just go for uh fist weapons i feel like that has the biggest upside i'd probably be praying for the Wan kim lao or even vengeful wind or you know fist of ass to go with your gundo gear if you get them so yeah either way you're gonna need both of them end game for necromancer you get the masquerade of the burning carnival now this came out last season it was a bit of a meme because it was really weak so what Blizzard did was they took the trouble and they made bracers, which give about 500% multiplier for each simulacrum, which skyrocketed basically up to S tier plus the seasonal theme. You're definitely looking at an S tier build next season, even capable for group play. It's pretty amazing. People like 1400 Paragon doing a 126 solo currently on the PTR as I mean, it just hits really hard and it's actually tanky for a necro build, which is refreshing. Necro in general gets to take advantage of these themes. The way the class was designed is they have a lot of weapon multipliers, like general multipliers, and they can kind of stack them with all the different builds and play styles. Like the others, it's great for speeds, bounties, uh, rifts, griffs, pretty much all aspects of the game it's going to excel at for sure, except for like meta four men. Um, this season, I don't think it'll make it, but it does have potential for future seasons. Even if this were to take a small nerf, it would still be super viable. Um, so yeah, bear that in mind. For Blood Shards, you're definitely going to go with Corpse Gauntlets. They buffed the base spell of Corpse Explosion like last season, and they gave you gloves. Let me show you. There's only one possible pair of gloves you can get at level 1, and those are Grasps of Essence. It's basically a 200% multiplier stacking five times. You just destroy everything, right? You're going to use something like Bone Spirit or anything that you have to create corpses and you just go to town, use the golem to create corpses for you. It's insane. It's the fastest leveling experience, 1 to 70, because you're beyond T6 and soft core, essentially. Um, this would be like a quick golem start, right, where you would have flesh golem giving you corpses. You could even use land of the dead frozen lands, um, bone spirit, astral projection to cause more corpses, cool down for golem, something like this. Um, and then close quarters is a nice rune. It gives you 1500%. In addition to this, okay, you already have easy to get gloves, really powerful gloves. If you, if you upgrade two handed scythes, you have a hundred percent chance to get a multiplier. So Relena's works with the gloves. Nayers, if you use poison skills, right? Like we showed works with the gloves. Um, bone spear works with your set for Hadric. But it could also create corpses for you then to use corpse explosion, right? And the same thing with a blood tide blade. It can create corpses for you and then you can save like Land of the Dead for the Rift Guardian or your Golem cooldown for the RG. And I mean, Necro has the easiest, by far the easiest uh, leveling process and um, early game just because they have guaranteed massive amounts of power with no RNG whatsoever. 
Um, early game, you're basically going to build around LOD since the set doesn't do anything for you. Okay, so I'll give you some, I guess, negative news is that you don't really get anything without Haunted Visions, right? Haunted Visions allows your simulacrums to be alive. Let me show you. Let's bring out the simulacrums here, right? They only last like five to 10 seconds without Haunted Visions. So the two piece doesn't do anything for you. The four piece doesn't do anything for you until you get Haunted Visions. The six piece, we tested the six piece with just crappy yellow gear, right? No Paragon, no Augments, no legendary gems, just this bum ass gear right here. And I was able to do T7 because the six piece does give you 10,000% damage and it was enough, even without the bracers, right? It was enough, right? So once you get the six piece, you can at least do damage and play that way. But I can see a lot of people just going Laud start and building around whatever they get, whether it's Relena's or, um, you know, the Blood Tide Blade or anything like that. Build around whatever you get, level up your Laud gem. You're probably going to need it anyway. If you don't, you can always use it as like a 99 augment or something. For Witch Doctor, you get the Spirit Barrage set. Now, this is one of my favorite sets that they added. It's visually cool to look at. It does lots of damage. It could be the group wave clear as it's really powerful. The speeds are okay, not as good as the others, but you can definitely solo farm your own Paragon. It gets a little bit tankier with the cube. You're able to use each weapon. So the Mundanugu set uh, is a Spirit Barrage set, so you can use the Barber, you can use Vu's Juicer, and you can use Sacred Harvester. So you get all three of your weapon powers now active for Season 22, which is great. Mundanugu speeds are fine, but you might be using the chicken. They might buff the chicken build. Uh, so you might be switching to Helltooth Chicken for that chicken bomb explosion if they buff it further. It does need some work, but again, check the website for the best build and all that stuff. You can do pugs, you can do group play, pretty much everything. This is a pretty solid set, as I've been saying. For blood shards, you have it really easy as well, just like Necromancer did. This is probably the second fastest leveling spec because of Haunt, and you get Gazing Demise really early on. So if you look at your level one options, you get a Mojo, and it's the Spirit Barrage Mojo. So you get a fat multiplier to synergize with getting your six piece set at level 70. It's great. You can farm like T6 technically if you wanted around level 17 when you get the Spirit Barrage spell itself. One thing to note is don't cube um, items that are not weapons because you can just hold the low level item the whole way while you're leveling and it doesn't really hurt you all you're losing is main stat but you still get the same multiplier that you get at level one that you get at level 70. but a weapon you'll outscale pretty quickly so definitely cube your weapons but your offhands or whatever just kind of leave them in your offhand that way you have uh, flexibility to do that so you get a killer set at 70 you get an easy access to spirit barrage and you also get rush of essence i believe around level 30. And what Rush of Essence does is it returns mana when you use Spirit Barrage. So you have infinite resource, which is great. Like that's the, all the problems, right? That you would go through are pretty much taken care of here. It's amazing. For your level 70 weapon upgrades, I would do what we talked about. And I would try to score one of those ceremonial knives, right? The Vuz Juicer, um, the Barber, or the Sacred Harvester. And if you get anything else, like I said, the Chicken Dagger, you might need this. Or you can always use it along the way anyway. You can cube it since it is a weapon and get that multiplier early as well. Like if you get unlucky and don't get the gazing demise, you can, you know, cube the dagger at darts or anything else you get, hopefully. Similar to the Necromancer, the Spirit Barrage set doesn't do much for you. The two-piece Big Bad Voodoo follows you around, lasts twice as long. That doesn't do much. And then you get 60% damage when you enter the Spirit Realm, which is great. All you have to do is cast um, Spirit Walk and you get that 60% damage bonus which is really good so i can see people going to lod start or you just go four piece uh, mundanugu with a gazing demise and you should be able to clear the gr20 no problem it's more than enough damage uh, make sure you use the manitou rune as it synergizes with the gazing demise remember to check the build they changed it um pet damage doesn't work with spirit barrage anymore so now you're going to be using like frosties or something like that for wizard you get the hydra set Typhon's Veil. This set is going to be at the very top of A tier, maybe breaking into S tier, right? With the fourth slot. Um, if there's some Death Wish shenanigans that you can maybe pull off, like tapping Death Wish to get that extra damage bonus and then 
going back into your generator and then tapping death wish and going back into your gen there's some shenanigans right i'll cover that in the build guide um, if it does go live but as of right now it's very top of the a tier if the season went live tomorrow i would play typhons the new typhon hydra build and i would play the necromancer set right those are the two they're like mid-range casters and i really like the play style of both of them so you're lacking in the speed build department but it is fine you're looking at like 225 two minutes to 225 um, t16 which is slower than like the god set obviously and um, a lot of other builds but it's it'll get it'll get by right and then you can play veers for speeds as well um, the website has a veer speed build in general wizards one of the tankiest classes in the game because you get shields and you can play around your shields with Ashnagar's galvanizing ward you really build around them and hydra's no different um, you actually use a generator like Spectral Blade to get more shields to then stay alive. So it's not too bad. Um, I really enjoy the playstyle, like I was saying. For your blood shards on Wizard, you also get a new item uh, that they added to the game. Well, they buffed the old item. They buffed the Winter's Flurry. Let's go ahead and bring it up at level one. Like Witch Doctor, there's only one offhand that is going to give you damage. So there's no that that much RNG and you have a really high chance to get Winter's Flurry. Um, when you cast Hydra, they do 150% increased damage. That's great. You know, you get Hydra at 21, but they have to be in a blizzard. So you don't get blizzard till 27. So you don't get to use the item right away. But by the time you hit 27, which isn't too long, um, you're going to hit really hard and it'll be like, you'll start coasting to 70 from there. Um, Hydras are great for massacre bonuses, leveling, and just in general, get that all around power. And it does synergize with this is like the actual end game item you're going to be using with your Hydra set anyway. It's a new item that they added. So yeah, you're going to be casting your generators and casting Blizzard to power them up um, for the speed build and the push build. I'm going to give you guys another option for your level 70 weapon upgrade. I would definitely do wands. I feel like there's so many wands that can really pop off and help you out like uh, Unstable Scepter, the Wand of Woe is even good. Uh, Fragment of Destiny is one of the new items that they buff this patch. Your signature spells buff Hydra damage. This would be great. Um, even this, the Serpent Sparker, it's here somewhere. That's going to, right here, it's going to buff Hydras. I would definitely go Wands. But you could, if you really wanted, go Daggers. And you have a 33% chance to get a Wizard Spike. Performing an attack has a chance to throw Frozen Orb. But... In general, it'll buff Frozen Orb by 350% increased damage, which is nice, right? So just the options here just to give you guys the knowledge. I wouldn't do this, but the option's there if you're feeling squirrely, you know? For Hydra, you can take your Winter's Flurry and you can build into the Lod Start, or you can go into the set. Either way, the two-piece, again, doesn't do too much for you. Um, the four-piece does give you damage reduction, but, you know, like a, like a lot of these sets don't do much for you. So you can actually skip Hadrig and do it after you get some LOD gear, some LOD levels, or either way, like it's not necessary like to do it. But once you get your six piece, they buffed it to 2000% increased damage. So Hydra hits harder than ever before. So that is a good option there. For Barbarian, you get the Frenzy set. Now the Frenzy set gets a lot of hate, right? It's decent for speed. It's about as fast as Hydra, right? Um, it's decent for pushing. It's like in the B tier, maybe the B plus tier with the seasonal theme. It's solid overall. But honestly, this is the most fun I've had with a build in a like in a long time. This is just speaks to my play style, man. Beasting a Rift Guardian to death is one of the most exciting things I've I've done in a long time. Like normally, like we're terrified of Vesalius or I don't know, Cold Snap, right? But not with Frenzy Bar. If you want to be a RG beast, a solo beast too, for that, it's really fun. I'm gonna take the time and just show you guys. So this is me. I spawned Vesalius. There's 29 seconds left, okay? It's a 118 hardcore. This is not the cube theme, right? This is like two seasons ago, whatever. So the build's gonna be stronger than this right here. But this is, this is what you might have to look forward to, right? It's not the best build in the game, but you have some dope moments like this. Again, I'm on hardcore, 1400 Paragon, a 118. Oh, not like this. And I'm just like, there's no way I'm going to beat Vesalius. Oh, not like <laughs> There's no way. No, no, no. 20 seconds. You want the smoke, Vesalius? I'll give it to you. 15 seconds, he's at 70. 
12 seconds, he's at 55, 60%. Man, we 10 seconds, more than 50. RNG. Look at this DPS. Seven. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Just fun. Just fun, man. Yeah, I'm bringing the smoke, man. Yeah, normally, like, you don't do that to Rift Guardians, so that's that's what you might have to look forward to, okay? All the builds um on Hadric are just as fun, but you have some crazy moments like that with uh, Frenzy Barb. The good news is you're also not forced to farm with Frenzy. You can push with Frenzy, and you can speed farm with Whirlwind Barb. Now, Whirlwind Barb is the chillest one-handed build out there. Whatever you do with your other hand is totally up to you. Whirlwind is going to be S tier build as you can use focus and restraint with the Whirlwind build now. It's going to be stronger than ever before. Just think about it. Frenzy or focus and restraint is stronger than COE, but you get to keep it up full time. So it's like double better. The Frenzy set itself is kind of cool. The two piece doubles the effectiveness of shouts. So that's like falter gets double damage. Um, Battle rage gets double damage War everything is doubled on all your shouts, right? It sounds crazy, but it's really powerful two piece set. And um, when you CC them with fear, frozen or stun, they take double damage. So you can fear with terrify, you can freeze them with cold rush, furious charge, you can ground stomp, stun. So Barb has a lot of CC and a lot of shouts. So the two piece is great because it pairs with anything that you get. So which brings me to the Blood Shard recommendations for Barbarian. You go to your Bracers at level 1, and you can get Bracers of Destruction or Bracers of the First Men. One buffs Hoda, the other one buffs Seismic Slam, and they works great with your two-piece. You should be able to get through your GR20 clear, uh, especially with uh, the seasonal theme and the Shadow Clone spawning from the pylons. You should have no problem getting through the GR20 clear with all these on the list here. Just uh, make sure you use a multiplier with your two-piece in tandem, and you will be pretty good. You could take your bracers and you can build into Lod, or you can build into the set, either way. For your weapon upgrade, I definitely would go with two-handed mighty weapons, as they buffed another mighty weapon, so that lowers the RNG of bad mighty weapons, right? So you can get Bastion's Revered, which goes with Frenzy set, really good. Blade of Tribes, they added a multiplier to it now. Uh, as of right now in the PTR, it's 200%, but it could easily get buffed up way higher than that. Fury of the Banished Peak for a Seismic Slam and then Gavel for Hoda. So that's like five good ones, right? And then you have two meh to bad ones, but you have five good options, which is really good. Or did I miscount? Is that four? Four good options. Four out of six is, is really good RNG. If you're like Blood, I don't want to play none of that, man. I want the Frenzy experience. You can go Belts at level one instead of Bracers. Now, Bracers are guaranteed. Maybe after you get one Bracer, then you roll Belts, right? Uh, at level 1 belts, you have a chance to get any of these crappy belts, but you can also score a mighty belt from Kadala. She groups up all the belts together in one category. So, yeah, you can get the Girdle of Giants, which buffs Earthquake, but what we're looking for is the Undisputed Champion. Frenzy gains the effect of every rune and has a 400% multiplier. So you could use this in tandem with your bracers, right? So you can get the Frenzy belt, you could even get this while leveling, and you can get your bracers, which would be great. Right, 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 right. Okay, let's wrap it up. What's the conclusion, right? The conclusion is the fastest leveling progress from 1 to 70, 1 to GR100 probably is going to be a Necromancer. They absolutely obliterate leveling. They have guaranteed huge amounts of power um, with their blood shards and with the upgrade. Pay to win, baby, all day long for speed. Uh, number two would be Witch Doctor, a close number two. You could say if Necromancer gets unlucky and doesn't get Corpse Gauntlets, Witch Doctor should beat them just with Haunt and Massacre bonusing alone. Witch Doctor is insane level speed, really easy to, you know, progress, Massacre bonus and all that stuff. So, and Witch Doctor has a sick low RNG offhand, the Gazing Demise. So I'd put Necro 1, Witch Doctor 2. And then it's cool for Witch Doctor because your Gazing Demise pairs with Mundanugu this season. And Wish Doctor could also be the first 100 for season 22, especially if Necromancer uh, doesn't get the Corpse Gauntlets early. But most likely you're going to get the Corpse Gauntlets or you're going to be in a group with other Necros who at least get one to carry, you know. The most fun award, okay, this is important, goes to my Frenzy Bar beasting the hell out of Rift Guardians and Patterns of Justice Monk. Just pure fun, especially with Slender Little Rogue. It's just a smooth sailing 
ass kicking time. The first GR 120, I would put the I put my money on Demon Hunter. That would be the God set hitting the first 120 in a season. But the first 130, if it doesn't get nerfed, would be the Akan Bomb Crusader uh, for sure. I also made another category for wild cards, okay? The wild card award is probably gonna be Wizard. I truly believe Blizzard wants to make Twister the star of the patch. And as I'm filming this video, Twister is strong, but you can't focus the damage with Twisters. So definitely check back often because I have a suspicion they're gonna buff Wizard to the moon, baby. So Wizard would be the wild card as of right now. That's my prediction for, yeah. That's what I would wanna start the season with is Twister. You know, but right as of right now, it's not there. They also buffed like three to four builds. You have a Frozen Orb. They technically buffed Spectral Blade. They buffed Hydra. They buffed Twister. So they buffed like four plus builds for Wizard. I have a strong feeling that they're going to buff it. Honestly, play what's cool to you. I know people say it, but it's true, you know? The leveling process is a drop in the bucket of a many month season. Even if you only play a week, uh, two hours, two to four hours of leveling is a small drop compared to a week, right? That's like, you know, multiple hours. So definitely just play whatever's cool and you'll have a good time. I have Let's Plays of pretty much all these sets on my channel. If you just wanna see how I progress early, you wanna prepare for the season. If you just scroll down the videos, you'll see um, Let's Plays of Seismic Slam Barb. Here's God Set, Let's Play. We hit rank one. Here's a Necro, we hit rank two. We actually would have hit rank one, but we the server froze, Blizzard. I am scared, Mr. Shed. I have a little direction. Whoa, that lag. That sucks, dude. That sucks. That server lag. Come on, man. Come on with the server lag, dude. Come on, Blaze. How are you going to do me like that, dude? I was right there. The shield. And my grasp. So I had a lot of server deaths, you know. As you scroll down, you'll start to see more and more um, Let's Plays with more and more builds like um, Melee Mancer, here's a Spirit Barrage Let's Play from last season, Tempest Rush. So you get it, right? Hydra, you can kind of just see how I progressed early and what decisions I made along the way. Remember bloodshed.com for the website for all the builds. Um, if you want to support further, you can go on Patreon. I appreciate all my patrons out there. I usually don't push any of this stuff too hard. Um, only like 40 minutes into the video, but uh, I appreciate it, man. It means a lot and it encourages me to keep uh, making content and pushing it forward. That's going to be all for me today. This is Bloodshed. I'm out of here. Peace.